we're in the uh, reptile department um, or the herpetology department at Dural Wildlife Conservation Trust in Jersey. <laughs> basically two jobs. Um, we have uh, obviously because it's a zoo we have a exhibition for the public um, so we maintain a proper zoo exhibit um, with on show exhibit um, displays and also in the back area obviously then backup um, for the display um, but the other side and which is actually much larger than our exhibit is our back breeding area um, mostly for in support of our conservation projects in the field. Uh, the mountain chicken frog from uh, the island of Montserrat. Um, Durrell, we became involved in uh, 1998, the very first time. Um, that was prompted by the volcano on Montserrat breaking out. Um, it was a massive eruption. Uh, the whole human population had to be evacuated um, and it ended up with Montserrat being completely covered with lava bit more than half of the island. Um, and we got contacted by the, uh, uh, the Department of Environment in Montserrat to look at the mountain chicken frog because it is a very iconic species, it's one of the largest frogs in the world. It only lived in Montserrat and Dominica at that time. Um, and also it was a uh, traditional dish in Montserrat. So people would actually go out and hunt that frog uh, for consumption because it's so massive that actually, you know, you get a proper meal on your table and it was a traditional dish even sold in restaurants and um, people were worried by first of all the hunting and then by the volcano destru uh, destroying more than half of the habitat that uh, the population would not be viable anymore so we went there and um, that's how we became involved um, we did habitat assessments we trained uh, the Montserratian uh, locals on monitoring the populations we found out where they still are a big question was always how they reproduce because nobody could actually um, see and study them in the wild because they lay foam nests underground um, and nobody knew how it works so when we got them here the first time we actually found out a very new and unique reproductive, frog, uh, reproductive mode in frogs that the female actually protects the nest feeds the tadpoles several times a week with unfertilized eggs um, and yeah the tadpoles eat only the female's eggs, nothing else. So it's a very special parental care, what we found out. And um, the next stage was in 2009, when the chytrid fungus, that is that um, very strange uh, little fungus that goes around the world at the moment, um, carried by people because of the global trade, um, it kills off amphibian populations and it arrived in uh, Montserrat in 2009 and we saw the whole populations crashing and uh, we stepped up our efforts then we got we got there studied the impact uh, we took the last remaining 50 founder frogs out from Montserrat which were not infected they were kept in a little small stream which the chytrid fungus hasn't reached yet and we took them here um, and to um, a number of collaborating institutions to try to breed them and maybe we could find a way to transfer them back to Montserrat and boost the population uh, maybe see that some could create resistances and this was what's going on uh, since uh, three years now um, that uh, twice a year approximately we fly frogs that we bred here again in quarantine conditions we fly over, we radio track them um, so we put little radio transmitters on them, uh, we follow them around, we can study how they spread, where they live, how the chytrid fungus is impacting them. And um, yeah, next, in two weeks actually, we're going back to Montserrat, everybody involved, all the stakeholders, uh, to formulate an action plan meeting for the next three, four years. There are some indications um, from infected, chytrid fungus infected amphibian populations that not all hope is lost. Um, there's a lot of populations, they just crashed immediately and we couldn't find any uh, frog within months. Um, so basically complete extinctions. But we see 
some evidence that you know some populations could recover. Um, some species of frogs are not susceptible at all. They carry the fungus, they don't mind, no problem at all. Um, which is ironically the problem in Montserrat because we have the cane toad in Montserrat, which is an in, uh, introduced alien species, and they carry the fungus, but they don't uh, get infected. So, um, but anyway, so we have around the world a species of amphibians which don't care, really. Uh, we have others that only decline a little bit and then bounce back, especially small frogs, which have a high reproductive rate with a dense population. Uh, some species just, you see a little bit of a dip and then they recover. Um, we also had um, species of frogs that were completely extinct, or we thought they were extinct for years, and suddenly a few pop up again. Whether that is enough, we don't know. It's the same with the mountain chickens. Um, they were completely gone in Dominica and then now recently in Montserrat after the chytrid fungus hit. And now we see the odd one, you know, like one or two, maybe a handful in Dominica, I think two we found in, in Montserrat, um, that we've seen and recorded before 2009, before the chytrid fungus, and they are still alive. So there is a chance that many of those populations will bounce back but that will only happen if they are not threatened by any other problems, i.e. if we don't encroach their habitat, if we don't you know, pollute their water, if uh, the um, climate change doesn't hit them too hard, then there would be a chance. But obviously, the smaller the population is, the more vulnerable it is for additional problems.